once again, you've tuned in tonight to Nightline with Mary and Tony. So we welcome here to, you here tonight. we uh, have been doing this quite a while and enjoying every week of it. So we just look forward to getting your prayer request in tonight and your praise reports and uh, for you to be a part of that so that we can pray with you and agree with you. But we've got a great program lined up. I'm excited about the guest tonight. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell about my part of it. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, my daughter, Dana, Dana Sloan Kirk from uh, Madison, Mississippi is with us tonight. And uh, also we have with us one of my grandchildren, which is Dana's daughter, Annalise. And then Tony Addison, your daughter, is going to be on with us tonight too. We wish we had the other two of my grandchildren, which are uh, Savannah and John Huey, but they had to get back home a little early, but we're going to go ahead and, and just Chase. do it with that. Yeah, well, <laughs> well you start Chase. naming them all, you better name them all. <laughs> That's right. Well, I was going to get to Chase. <laughs> Love Chase. He's amazing. But thank you for tuning in tonight. And I know Tony's going to tell you about our next guest. And we are, I'm telling you, we are so excited to have this guy. And we've been trying to get him for a couple I'm of years. I'm very excited. He is a speaker a pastor, a counselor, an author of the five love languages, Dr. Gary Chapman. I'm so excited that he is going to be with us tonight. We're going to be doing a Skype with him. So we feel very honored that he's taken the time out. He's actually just written a book um, during these last couple of months called Five Simple Ways to Strengthen Your Marriage when you're stuck at home together. <laughs> We've all been stuck at home together lately and spent probably more time together than we normally do. And so he just felt impressed to write. It's a very um, small, easy read book. I've been reading it and uh, it has a lot of great tips in it. So he felt impressed to just uh, really yes. write this and pour into marriages. Um, and that's what he's known for is pouring into marriages. Right. Um, so if they've ever gotten on Facebook now, they need to go ahead and get on Facebook and share this because yes. if you know Gary Chapman, you know it's going to be good. Right. And this book is well known. Um, and, you know, it, it takes me back to our scripture for tonight, which is Romans 8, 28. And it says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And, you know, God works for the good in all of us. You know, he takes all things, he turns it around for our good and his glory. And it just made me think of what the Lord impressed on Dr. Chapman mm -hmm. to really take the situation that we're in and let's use it. You know, God can use any situation yes. for our good and his glory. And uh, Dr. Gary Chapman is a, has a PhD. He's an author, speaker, pastor, counselor, like I mentioned. He has a passion for people and helping them form lasting relationships. He's a well-known uh, marriage counselor and the director of marriage seminars. The Five Love Languages is one of Chapman's most popular titles, topping various bestseller charts for years, selling over 12 million oh, wow. copies. Wow. I mean, it's just incredible. Yeah. Um, he's been on the New York Times bestsellers list continuously since 2000, 2007. Chapman has been directly involved in real life family counseling since the beginning of his ministry. So we're just, I just feel so honored yes. um, to have him here. Now I've personally read the five love languages uh, several times. Brad and I have done that as a married couple. Um, we did it with one group of people when we were probably early married, um, just to, I yeah, guess in I our marriage within the first five years. Um, and we actually recently did it again within the last two or three years, I believe. Um, so it's a great book and I feel like if you've never read the five love languages, it's incredible, not just for you and your spouse, but to understand family and friends around you. It just really pours into your relationships with your children to understand their love language yeah. and, you know, parents and friends. So it strengthens. What did you feel like you learned the second time around? You said you did it twice. I did. And, you know, the second time, I just, as you mature and you grow in life, um, I feel like my love language is changed a little bit because, you know, things are important to you at different times. And so I recognized that maybe love languages that weren't as important to me mm -hmm. younger in our marriage that it became more important as our marriage 
got older. And why so. do you think that was? <laughs> um, I, you know, just learning more about myself, I guess, and more about Brad and, you know, realizing what's important in life and what's A lot of times not. you wonder how, why they act like they do. Well, that's their love language in a lot of ways, right. just like yours is. Yeah. Now, there's five love languages. There is five. Now. There's words of affirmation. So Got if you like memorized. to be told, you know, honey, you did a great job today, and that's their love language. That really makes their love tank full. Mm -hmm. Then there's also physical touch, you know, hugging and just holding hands and just a rub on the back. You know, that can really make someone feel. That's my son's love language is physical touch. He's a hugaholic. He sure is. Um, acts of service, that's my love language. Now, Brad can come and give me a hug, and, and I'm good with that, but let me see him folding some laundry. That <laughs> fills my tank or emptying the dishwasher or just doing something that is an act of service. Mm -hmm. um, then there's gifts and quality time. So those are the five, and, you know, they're all important. I think we all have a little bit of all of those, mm -hmm. but... Um, his new book, Five Simple Ways to Strengthen Your Marriage. Now, he wrote this out of the shelter in place um, and taking this as an opportunity to renew your relationships. And out of this COVID-19 pandemic, it's affected so many areas in our lives. It's right. affected um, the healthcare system. It's affected people's businesses. It's mm -hmm. affected finances. And most unexpectedly, the shelter in place has affected marriages. Um, right. The very and, you know, home you had to stay in. Right. And so he says something, you know, we've talked about this, that we're all in the same storm during this pandemic, but we're all traveling in different boats. Mm -hmm. And I was reading the introduction to this, and he said the same thing. He yeah, said... I've heard you say that before. <laughs> yeah. He said... Um, we're in, he called it ships. He said, we're in different ships with different dynamics. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you might... Your boat or ship looks different from mine or, or your neighbors or, you know, your, your other family. So I just thought that was really neat. But he did, um, one of the things I read, it says the divorce rate is expected to increase in America after mm -hmm. people begin to get back to business. And it's not because of shelter in place. All it does is it enhances right. the problems and opens those up to right. um, really notice that they were there. And this happened in China is what they're saying. Yes. But I wanted to, Mom, I know you're going to sing a song. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to sing a couple songs tonight, and Dana and Annalise and Addison, so yes. I'm going to let you prepare for that. But um, this book talks about our attitude and how it can make a difference. And your attitude really does make a difference in your relationships. Um, and I wanted to just talk about the five simple ways that strengthen our marriage that he says. It's call a truce on throwing word bombs. That's a really big one. Our words can really hinder um, or help a relationship. Tear down emotional walls. Discover and speak each other's love language. It's important to know your spouse's love language. Learn the value of teamwork and have a daily sit down and listen time. You know, we all want to be heard. And so to take some time out of your schedule to sit down and say, you know, tell me what's on your mind, what's on your heart. I think that is really important in a relationship. And I'm not perfect at any of these. And I am reading his book and I am praying that the Lord will use this to really strengthen my marriage. But we're excited to have him on tonight. But before we have uh, Dr. Chapman on, you're going to enjoy this. My mom singing, I Can't Help It. I can't help it. I can't help it. I gotta jump for joy. I can't help it cause he's done so much for me. So much. Oh, I can't help it. I can't help it. I gotta get up out of my seat. I can't help it. No, I can't help it. I gotta stand to my feet. Oh, I can't help it. Oh, I can't help it. I gotta jump for joy. Me. So much for me. Cause he healed my body. He brought me from destruction. He gave me a brand new life. So I, I won't be reluctant to tell him that I love him. And I'll give him all I got. I can't help it. He 
tonight. As we said earlier, we have Dr. Gary Chapman with us. He is a speaker, a pastor, a counselor, and an author of one of his more popular books, The Five Love Languages. And we shared a little bit about that earlier. So super excited. We just want to welcome you. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. Well, thank you, Tony and Mary. Good to be with you. And I didn't realize you are our neighbor in North Carolina. <laughs> so... Absolutely. <laughs> Maybe Winston-Salem, just up the road. Yes, not too far. Well, you have this new book, Five Simple Ways to Strengthen Your Marriage When You're Stuck at Home Together. So I've been reading through this myself, and we've all realized that, well, we've spent a little more time with each other than we had expected this year. But, you know, and there's also loved ones that we haven't been able to see. How can we fill the love tank of those we haven't been able to see when we can't be with them during this time? Well, you know, if we know their love language, you can speak all of the love languages long distance. A few years ago, I wrote a special edition for the military in which I gave ideas on how you can express the love languages when you're deployed, and they would work in these days also if you're separated from each other. For example, you would think that physical touch would be impossible if you're half a world away, okay? But one lady said, I knew my husband's language was physical touch, so while he was deployed, I put my hand on a sheet of paper, I traced my hand and mailed it to him with a note that said, put your hand on my hand, I want to hold your hand. <laughs> when he came home, he said, Gary, every time I put my hand on that paper, I felt her. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not literal touch, but it's emotional touch. And that's what we're talking about. Excellent. So all of these languages, really, you can speak uh, when, when we are separated. And that's where technology can be a wonderful asset. You know, we didn't have that years ago. But now we can use technology to reach out and speak words of affirmation, and spend quality time with each other in a chat room or whatever. So, yeah, it's not that difficult now. Yeah. It's not the same, not the same as being in the same room together, <laughs> but it does touch them emotionally. Right. Yeah. Thank the Lord for technology that he's given us to be able to do that with one another during this time. Now, you know, there may be relationships and even those that are together in the homes that one is not really willing to work or make an effort on the relationship to improve it. Like, what do you do then? How can you improve it when one doesn't really want to make that effort? Well, you know, unfortunately, that's often the case. And sometimes the person that really would like to work on the marriage will say to themselves, well, they're not willing to read a book. They're not willing to talk about this. They're not willing to do anything. So how can we have a good marriage if they're not willing? Now, I understand that feeling 
and those thoughts. But the reality is one person can influence another person. Now, we don't choose our emotions. I know that if your spouse says, I'm not interested in that, emotionally you feel disappointed, you feel let down, you feel sad. And we don't choose those emotions. They just grab us. But we choose our attitude and we choose our behavior. And a positive attitude says, okay, this is a time of stress, but we're going to make it. Okay, we're not doing real well, and they're not interested in working on it, but I am going to work on it. And you choose that attitude, and, and, and this book can be very helpful. The ideas we're going to share can be very helpful in how to have a positive influence on your spouse. As a matter of fact, every day we're together, we influence each other, either positively or negatively. Right. So what I say is, let's learn how to have a positive influence on your spouse. It's true. We cannot change our spouse. We can't make them, uh, you know, re-engage with us. But we can have a positive influence. And there's a good chance when we do, they will begin to re-engage with us. Well, let me say along with my daughter, Tony, that we are just excited to have you here today. Everybody knows Gary Chapman, we feel like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think because we love you so much. You know, we've followed you so many years. So uh, if you're just joining us right now, we have Gary Chapman, Dr. Gary Chapman, who wrote, wrote the book of the, the Five Love Languages, and he's written a recent book we're talking about today. So get on the phone or get on Facebook One and tell them right now that we are interviewing Dr. Gary Chapman. Well, you know, see, we're seeing such an increase in domestic violence during this time, and why do you think that is? Well, you know, I think if the marriage was already troubled before the pandemic set in, mm -hmm. and then we're thrown together, what was there just becomes more intense. And so that's where True. physical abuse, verbal abuse takes place. Uh, it was already going on to some degree but now we're thrown together and it's going on even more now. So I think that's why uh, we're seeing more of that during this time in which everything has changed for us. And the person that was already had an abusive nature yes. will express that uh, more often and sometimes more, uh, more deadly than they did before. Right. Well, what do you think the benefits of calling a truce in a relationship? What do you think about that? <laughs> Well, you know, that's one of my ideas, especially if the couple is already in a troubled marriage where they are verbally throwing what I call bombs at each other, uh, negative statements to each other. For example, a lady said to me just recently, she said, Dr. Chapman, my husband called me lazy because I didn't put a plastic bag back in the trash can after I took the trash out. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, what's wrong with this guy, you know? Why didn't he thank her for taking the trash out? <laughs> Amen. But we throw these negative bombs, and I'm saying, you know, for some couples, the starting place would be to say, why don't we call a truce on throwing verbal bombs? Okay, we're stressed. We're each throwing things back and forth at each other. And every time you throw a bomb, it explodes in the heart and mind of the other person. And it's destructive. So you throw one, they throw one, you're back and forth, and you're literally destroying your marriage by throwing verbal bombs. So if we call a truce and just say, let's try, uh, first of all, just for a week and not throw a verbal bomb, wow. not criticize each other for a That's week. Good. Already the atmosphere begins to change. And then what if the next week we say, why don't we try this at least once a week, maybe twice a week, we give each other a compliment. So we're going to exchange the bombs for a compliment. We're going to exchange criticism <laughs> for gratitude. Uh, I shared that with one lady, and she said, well, Dr. Chabon, it would be nice if I could give him some positive words. I know that. She said, but to be honest with you, I can't think of anything good to say about it. <laughs> 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 and I said, well, uh, does he ever take a shower? <laughs> and she said, well, yes. I said, well, how often? She said, well, every day. I said, if I were you, I'd start there. Honey, I appreciate you taking a shower. <laughs> <laughs> right. Listen, there are men who don't, okay? Uh, and I've never found a man or a woman 
that you could not find something good to say about them if you look for it. And so I, I, asked, a, I asked a husband one time, I said, write down three things you appreciate about your wife. So he, he wrote them down. She's a good cook. She's a good mother. She's a good school teacher. Well, that's a good place to start, you know? So I said, let's just start with those three. Right. So for the next three weeks, you take one of those. And in the first one, you just say to her, honey, I haven't told you this in a long time, but you're a good cook. And I really appreciate what you do. And then the next week you say, honey, uh, you know, I've been thinking about us and you are such a great mother. And I want to thank you for the way you mother our children. And then the next week you say, honey, you, the parents of your school kids, they must think you're a great teacher because everything I hear about you is just super about teaching. I, I'm, I, I really like that about you. He told me, he said, the third week, Dr. Chapman, when I got through, she said, what's going on with you? I've never heard you give me so many compliments. He said, well, honey, I'm just trying to learn how to express my thanks for who you are. And she said, you are a great husband. I love you so much. And he said to me, she hadn't said that in a long time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just when you choose to stop throwing bombs That's and you start right. throwing out words of appreciation, it changes the whole emotional climate. You know, that makes me think back years ago, I was reading something or listening to someone speak and they were saying, if you have a positive attitude and you say positive things to someone, eventually they can't continue to throw those, you know, bombs at you because yeah. someone who's complimenting you and being kind and showing love, it's That's hard right. to be mean to. So yeah, exactly. um, it's a cycle, you know, and we can choose to stop that cycle and start new cycles. So I think that is so important because, you know, you grow up hearing sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt. And I know I'm 45 years old and words hurt me today still. So um, our words, you know, there's power, death and life and the power of the tongue. So um, yeah. I think that's great. I had read both of those stories in your book. And, you know, it's just the small things that we do. My husband, he always throws out love bombs to me. He tells me every day he loves me. Every day, honey, you're beautiful. And he said just yesterday, do you, does that ever get old? Do you want me to stop? And I said, it never, no. never gets old <laughs> no. to hear kind yeah. words from your spouse. So, yeah, um, and that's, why, that's why going back to what you were saying earlier, Mary, if the husband's not willing to do this or the wife's not willing to do this, you know, you call the truce. You sign the truce. You say, for me, this week, I'm not going to do any criticisms. Right. And the next week, I'm going to start giving compliments. That's so good. again, you you follow this and you're changing the climate. And as you said, uh, Tony, they're they're less likely to shoot a bomb back if you didn't shoot a bomb at them. Right. So what are the first steps to making things right with God and what effects do you see that this has had on relationships? I know that the Lord has played a huge role in my marriage, but what have you seen with people you've worked with of how that relationship with the Lord has affected their marriage? Well, it's extremely important because by nature, we're not lovers. By nature, we're self-centered. My way is the right way. But when we have a right relationship with God, His love is poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. And we have the power to love our spouse, even if they're not lovely, even if they're not loving us. We can be God's agent in expressing love to them. I think for some couples, however, in this time of uh, stress, especially if the marriage is not going well, the first step is for you, whomever's willing to start, you get alone with God. And you say, Lord, you know what I live with. <laughs> you know my husband, you know my wife. And I know I blame them for a lot of stuff. But what I want to know is where have I been failing them? God will answer that prayer. One of his jobs is to convict us of our wrong. You write them down. You confess them to God. Then you go to your spouse and you say, Honey, I don't know how you feel about us, but I've been thinking a lot about us since these things have changed in these days. 
And I, I actually sat down the other night and asked God to show me where I have been failing you. And he gave me a pretty good list. And I've asked God to forgive me. And if you are willing to listen to me, I'd like to share these with you and ask you if you can find in your heart to forgive me. And when you approach wow. that, yeah, <laughs> that there's, you're not going to get a whole bunch of pushback when you approach someone about revealing, because we pray all the time, change them, change them, but you have to ask the Lord, what in me can you change? I'm just yeah. thrilled that you're here. We're going to have you back in another segment. Um, if you're just watching and tuning in, we have Dr. Gary Chapman who wrote The Five Love Languages and also his new book, Five Simple Ways to Strengthen Your Marriage When You're Stuck together at home. So we're going to be giving one of these away as well. But first, we've got my sister, Dana Kirk. She's going to sing Speak the Name. The atmosphere is changing. Nothing stays the same. Heaven is waiting. Mention of your name, spirit is moving, burning like a flame, healing the broken by the one that we proclaim. Raise it up, fill the sky, chains will fall, mountains move. Speak the name, the name of us. 
That was my sister, Dana Kirk. We're so happy that she's here with us this evening, and we'll be speaking with her in our 9 o'clock hour. But yes. right now, we have Dr. Gary Chapman with us. And um, before my sister sang, I want to circle back around to what we were talking about. Um, and you had said, going to the Lord and asking the Lord, show me what I need to change, and then going to your spouse and sharing that with them. But what if the spouse is not really open to that. Like, where do you go from there? Well, you know, one lady said, Dr. Chapman, you know, I hear what you're saying, but what if your husband really is the problem? <laughs> and I said, well, okay, let's say he's 95% of the problem. That would only leave 5% for you. You deal with your 5%, the marriage is 5% better. And when you apologize to him, he walks away and says to himself, Man, this is different. Mm. All I've been hearing for years is how bad I am. Now she comes and apologizes to me. Whoa, God can use that action to touch his heart. That's what I'm saying. Maybe that That's five turns into 10% better. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one spouse may think they're going to become a doormat if they submit to their, their, uh, their other half. So what would you say about that? You know, there are a lot of people that think the word submit is a female word, <laughs> you know, because Ephesians 5 says, wives, submit to your husbands. Two verses before that, it says, submitting yourselves one to another. Mm. <laughs> That's the right. whole key of, about the church and marriage. It's an attitude of service to the other person. Uh, you know, Jesus said about himself, I did not come to be served, I came to serve. And as his followers, if we choose the attitude of Christ toward our spouse and we are thinking and sometimes saying to them, honey, what can I do to make your life easier? How can I help you accomplish the things you want to accomplish? See, how can I serve you? You get that going both ways, husband and wife has that attitude, you're going to have a great marriage. And again, if one is not willing to do that, you choose that attitude. You know, and chances are your reaching out to serve them will stimulate something inside of them. You know, the Bible says we love God because he first loved us. He initiated it. We responded. So you be, you follow God's example. You reach out and express love and care and an attitude of service. And chances are it stimulates something inside of them and they come back with an attitude of service. Well, you must just be the perfect husband. <laughs> <laughs> That's my wife. <laughs> we need to talk to her too, huh? <laughs> well, the guy that knows the questions and all the answers, I'm going to ask you this. Should your emotions and actions always work together when it comes to showing love? And if not, when should they be separate? You know, I think uh, in our culture we have exalted emotions. And you hear people say, I've got to be true to my emotions. I just don't love her or I just don't love him. And what they're saying is I don't have these feelings mm -hmm. toward them that I once had. You know, love is not a feeling. Love is an attitude and behavior. Wow. It's the attitude of how can I serve you, that, which I, we just talked about. And, and then it has behavior that follows through with that. And maybe you don't have love feelings for your spouse, but if you choose an attitude of love and you start finding out what you can do to serve them, how you can express love to them in a meaningful way, you touch them in a deep emotional way. And often your love stimulates their love and the whole marriage can be reborn. I think that's one reason why the five love languages has helped so many couples around the, the world really 
because the book's been translated now in over 50 languages wow. around the world. And so many couples have said to me, Dr. Chairman, that book saved our marriage mm. because we realized that we'd been missing each other. Neither one of us felt loved by the other. We were just like roommates. And, and, but we learned the love language and we started speaking it and we connected. And so uh, you don't have to feel loving toward a person to be loving toward the person. And when you choose an attitude and behavior of love, you're touching them in a deep way, especially if you're speaking love in their love language. Yes, that makes I sense. I like that, you know. We don't always feel love, but we choose an attitude of love. And you know, that attitude, attitude plays a big role in the five love languages and practicing those love languages. You know, I, I will have to say, I. I am not much on physical touch. The first time I read your book, I scored a zero <laughs> on physical touch. And this is like my husband's highest. Um, but I think as I've had children, we've been married 20 years, um, and my son's love language is physical touch. It's helped me change that. And so when we read the book just a few years ago, that number came from zero up a few points. <laughs> but um, what role does attitude play in practicing the love languages? I think it's the key. You know, if, if we're going to go by our emotions, there's going to be many days we're not going to love our spouse in action. And the, more we, the longer we go without expressing love to them in a meaningful way, the more distant we become emotionally. But if we choose the attitude of love, and we, you can even say to yourself, you don't say it out loud, but you say it to yourself, you know, I'm not feeling very loving toward them because of what they did, but I know God loves them, and I want to be God's agent for expressing that love. Father, with your help, I'm going to love them today, and you reach out and do it in his power, and you speak their love language. You touch them emotionally. They're drawn to you. You're far more likely to have them begin to reciprocate and speak your love language. So attitude, I think, is extremely important as well as the power of God to not only motivate us, but to actually give us the ability to love that other person in a meaningful way. Yes. Well, Dr. Chapman, how do you maintain a servant's attitude when engaging in the love languages that aren't acts of service? Well, you know, I think uh, as you were talking, Tony, uh, many times uh, a husband's love language, number one, will be the wife's number five. Her number one will be his number five. It's a learning curve. And if you didn't receive one of these love languages growing up, yeah, it's difficult to speak it, you know, when you're, when you're uh, married. Uh, I remember the guy said to me, Dr. Chapman, he said, I, I can't say those words, you know, I love you and you look nice in that dress. And he said, that, that just doesn't come natural for me. I said, I understand that. If you didn't receive words growing up, it doesn't seem natural to you. But you know how you feel when she speaks your love language, whatever it is? He said, yeah, it's great. That's the way she feels when you speak words to her, if that's her love language. So the good news is we can learn to speak any one of these love languages, even if we didn't receive them growing up. We can learn to speak them as an adult. It'll be a learning curve, yes, but we can learn how to speak those. God speaks all five languages. We're made in His image. We have the capacity to speak all five languages. I heard uh, uh, this said once that a wife asked her husband, said, honey, does this dress make me look fat? And he said, yes, but it still looks good, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so that's love all around, huh? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> that wouldn't fit in now. That was probably years ago. <laughs> yeah. You know, love, like you said, the love languages, they may not come easy to us, but, um, you know, as you mature, and even like I had mentioned before, um, understanding your children's love language and practicing it with them as well has will help, you know, in your marriage as well, too. <laughs> So um, I've really enjoyed learning so much about that and how important it is. And a lot of times, like you said, what we do to someone, I know my husband, words of affirmation are important to him. And he's always telling me all the time, every day, I don't think there's a day that goes by that he doesn't tell me, Tony, you're beautiful. And I 
I think I've got to say more of that to him. You know, I've got to use those words of affirmation because that's something that fills his tank and just noticing, you know, what others are, you know, our spouse is saying to us. Um, well, do the five love languages always look the same or are there differences when it's with a friend or a coworker or a family member rather than your spouse? Well, I think there are differences. Uh, I call them dialects. Uh, you, you know, you might say to a little child whose love language is words of affirmation, they're six years old, you know, I just love you, you're so sweet, you're the sweetest little guy I've ever seen in the world. Well, that may not go over with a friend <laughs> 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 who's an adult, uh, but I think the love languages, the concept is basically the same. And uh, whether you're talking about a friendship at work or whether you're talking about a parent-child relationship or a marriage relationship, Everybody pretty much agrees the deepest emotional need we have on the human level is the need to feel loved by the significant people in your life. And if you feel loved by the significant people in your life, life is beautiful. I mean, it can be stressful and all of that, but it's still beautiful. If you don't feel loved, life begins to look pretty dark. And I think a lot of the misbehavior of children grows out of an empty love tank. So I say to parents, you know, the question is not, do you love your children? The question is, do your children feel love? Mm. And if you don't give them heavy doses of their primary love language, they won't feel loved, even though in your mind, you are loving them. So it's important to discover the primary love language. That is important. I've learned so much from you and I'm still learning. Tell our viewers how they can get this book. It's such an easy read. I know it's something that, you know, I don't think you have to have problems to want to improve your marriage. Who doesn't want a better marriage? Um, this is five simple ways to strengthen your marriage when you're stuck at home together. So tell us, how can uh, our viewers get a hold of your book? They can go online to fivelovelanguages.com, the number five, fivelovelanguages.com. And you'll see the book. You'll have links to where you can buy the book. It's available also to download if you want to do that uh, or it's available in printed books. So, yeah, they'll find a lot of other help at that same website, fivelovelanguages.com. Well, it has been an honor to have you on. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to be with us this evening. Um, we're going to give away one of his books tonight. I know it's going to bless you. And if you call in and you don't get it, then you just need to go to his website and grab one of these. So we're going to take the first caller right now and give away this book. So again, thank you, Dr. Chapman, for being with us. My mom is going to sing A Healer of My Broken Heart. Healer of my broken heart When I thought you'd forgot You picked me up once again When I was at my very end You poured the oil way down deep For all those bitter tears I'd wept Now my life is filled with joy my hope will never be destroyed. You turned my crying into laughter. You put a smile in its place. You took tears I'd cried for many years and wiped them from my face. And all the sadness that I felt from the very start. filled with sunshine that old darkness had to go there's no place for fear and doubt Satan's undefeated foe more than a conqueror you've made of me 
I'm going forth in victory and I'm taking back what Satan stole. He must return it. Seven Lord, you turn my crying into laughter. You put a smile in its place. You took tears I cried for many years and wiped from my face. And From the very start, you and only you, Lord, can heal my broken heart. Oh, it was you and only you, Lord, could. Thank you, Mom, for that song. He is the healer of our broken heart. Now, I'm a proud mom and aunt to introduce my daughter, Addison, and my niece, Annalise, to sing this incredible song called The Blessing. Shine upon you and be gracious. 
children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations. And your family and their children and their children and their children. May his favor shine upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children children and their children may his favor shine upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence come before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you What an honor to hear my grandchildren sing that, talk about the children and the children's children. And that is taken from the book of Numbers, the sixth chapter. And I hope you enjoyed that tonight. Wasn't it a blessing? It was. A we, blessing. We want to bless you with that. May the Lord bless you, keep you, shine upon you, be gracious to you, and bring yes. you peace. Thank you Amen. so much for watching. Amen. Stay tuned for our 9 o'clock hour. We're going to be speaking more with my sister Dana and my daughter Addison and my niece Annalise, and they'll be singing more.